All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna do some, um, how to apply some stencils in this. So, first things first, right here, go like, subscribe, and all of those beautiful things. Help me along. And uh, yeah, let's crack on with this. So, to start us off, what you wanna do is, we're gonna be making some, uh, templates here now i recommend you should do this when you're doing the stencils here instead of just eyeballing how you're going to cut the stencils lining it up and putting it all on you're going to lose bits you're going to mess the stencil up you're going to get angry and then you're going to moan at me so these are what you want to make simple to do Sell a tape i know a load of you know this already but for those of you who don't know it this is how I do it. It makes things so much more easy. And you don't waste as much of the stencils because I know like it's, it's all going into the cost of uh, your custom, right? So cross areas that aren't being made into a, uh, into a template, just take a slack, slack out by uh, the tension by cutting the tape. And then you'll be able to get the edges to turn. Now you don't have to be super accurate with this, because this is just a template to a template to put over the um over the stencil to make draw an outline for it. So we don't want to be super accurate, but yes. But so like that, fire out. Draw around, and what I would recommend with these is um, doing for every time you do a shoe, whether if it's a different size, do it for that size shoe. Right, we we'll take this off like so. Now, two ways here. One second, grab this paper. Well, look, do a bit of card. Now you could. Literally come round and cut this excess off if you want to be picky about it. Don't really have to. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add an extra 5 to 8 mil, maybe a centimetre, round the edge. So it's, you'll, I'll, um, you'll see what I'm doing, why I do it in a minute. So, let me just cut this off, like so, doesn't matter, that's cool, sorry for swearing again, right, like that, bit of card, like this, get one of these, Just like so, and then what I do is cut these out. You base, you can do this by hand, by eye. Sorry, eight mils, one centimetre, all the way round. Just like so, and um, what you're gonna do is end up with that size like this. Now these are just stencil templates. These aren't for anything else. You probably can find a use for them. So we've got this five and a half here. So that's the front of this with, let me zoom in a little bit, the front of this with a space. Now what you do with this for every panel, I just like to put the ticks down in the middle of it as well. The swoosh, sorry. That's the template for the swoosh back tab. So what you do is when you get your stencil like this, done it in white. I use one of these uh, heat uh, pens for fabric. You heat this up and it uh, disappears. But when you 
come to laying it down, you can fit to the edge so you're not getting too much wastage. You know exactly that you're going to be five mil, eight mil in from the edge. So you've got that. If you have more, if you're just cutting square pieces off and laying that over the stencil, you're going to have trouble trying to cut this here. You're going to end up pulling bits off and it's going to just create more time and wastage and you're going to get annoyed and blah, blah, blah. So like that, like that. Then what I recommend you do is you cut it out and now you've got different options to do here. So once you've cut it out, you've got either side, you've got your positive and your negative that you can use. Now, I've been trying to look for these. I can only find them in sets and I'm waiting for a couple of orders to come in from China again. Just so I can find these ones. When I do, I will let them know. I will let you guys know that I've got them. But you want to get one that's really sharp here. I even like to just bend it on the table just a little bit. And it gives it a little hooked edge. It's really, really sharp. You can't really see it too much. But if you can see that, it's got a sh like, hook on it. Now, so when I'm weeding, you can literally hook a bit. Get it in your hand your fingers and you use this because it's got that point on it if something starts to peel up you can get in and push it back down and it saves a lot of time with these bits the speed that you can get these up is where you save your time so something like this some of the ones i give out free some of you have got them they're pretty cool you just need to take a little bit of sandpaper and maybe sharpen the end, ends of those up a little bit. See, with the, this weeding tool, you can push, move things around, move around, manipulate, and you'll be a happy bunny with it. So, like that. This is the other side. See, this is where it becomes a little bit more complicated on these side, this side. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. A bit better. All right. So when you're doing the negative side you'll find that you'll be pulling up more edges because it's trying to leave things behind so you always pull if you've got little bits make sure you're pulling the smallest away from the smallest edges like you see there wait sorry there there's a piece come up right there so i can come in from behind push down on top of it pull it's come up push that down back onto here you can re-maneuver it and reposition it on the shoe afterwards if it's because you're trying to push it back down to a non-stick surface remember on this uh, backing paper so once it's up you're gonna have trouble sticking it back down but just get it back into a reasonable position and you can mess with it after another bit there move from behind push hold pull so and basically just go through like that and then once we've got we've done that leaves us with this now this side I've got because in the last video I showed you how to do the strips so you can take bits off strip by strip some people find that easier so I'm going to show you both. This is like one piece. I, this is different material that I'm using now as a transfer paper. This is much, much better than what I had before. So there it is. I'm oh, sorry. I put them, laid them on strips there. And we have oops, given ourselves a little push down. And then we want to start taking off from here now. So with these detailed stencils like this, I will be doing another one for you in a minute. It's a different stencil. With this weeding tool, you, when you're coming up, you can see the bits aren't all coming up like these dots. So you can come in with the tool like that. Just run over the back. And it's adhering to the transfer paper. So all it is, you just want to get rid of those little air bubbles behind transfer 
and the back end. Just like that. Whoops. Get on that. Now I should have stuck that again there. One moment, please. We should be back in a momento. Okay, in my eagerness to prepare everything properly, I have neglected putting a piece down the middle. So, let me just do this again, just to hold that together. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, right, other side. Same with the air. Uh, with the negative side. Probably gonna be a little bit difficult, more difficult doing it this way, instead of the single piece now. That, this is how we do it. How I do it anyway. Believe it or not, this is much quicker than certain ways. There is another way, which I will say in a minute. I'll show you, sorry. Okay, right, there we go. So, now, we are at this point here. So, we've got an overlap of about 8mm on each bit. So, we roughly want to roughly pl um, place our stencil down leaving our space there so I come across just starting with one side don't worry about this all moving around we can sort that afterwards and we want to get this oops let's zoom in a little there we are get this in a reasonable position and then we just start by pushing down on the edges here and what we want to do um let me put this under here you can see there there yeah so we literally as i said before we start peeling back can you see yeah just like this and we just want to get it started because once it's started it's going to go much more easier and this is where your weeding tool comes in because as you're rolling back and keeping it flat you can manipulate it and pick bits off that don't want to come off with the tool as you move a little bit down there Little dude off there. If you notice, it starts to move off of the backing paper much easier now. Like so, let me put this down now. Okay, okay, where am I, where am I? Moved. Uno momento. Ah, right, let's carry on. And once you get a nice bit of this off, you can. It starts to uh, go pretty well. I prefer that. I like doing it this way. And then I can just come in now once I'm on a flat bit and just literally push and roll. Can you see where I am? Yes, you can. Just push and roll, push and roll. Just like that. Right. Now I may have a bit of trouble on this side moving a little bit. Is it? Mm, a few bits move there, but we can, uh, we'll come back in and straighten that out. Yep. Good, good, good. Okay, this centerpiece you want to take off now. This is only there just to show you guys. 
so get these bits off at the bottom off you come off you come i should be able to pull this center piece off now down and then we go so now we can start come off come from the inside edge here and literally push down and in down and in if these are stuck down you want to slowly lift these up just like that and push them into the edge there don't worry about these sticking up because we'll sort that out after just like this get them in get them in start from the center out get that piece back center out and then this is where we're getting a good adhesion now. And I haven't even used the heat gun yet to activate the adhesive on the underside to give you that extra bond. All right, we'll leave that bit for now. Let's move on to this side. Now, what an idiot I am anyway, but I should have laid this up so I could carry on coming from this way, which I haven't. So I'm gonna have to come from this way which is a bummer, but we should be all right. So, my camera's going funny for one moment. Okay, I don't know what was going on there with the camera, but it was playing around. Okay, right, where was we? We are here. So, with, with, with the stripes of uh the strips sorry of um uh transfer tape we can work in one direction one direction which is sometimes pretty easy because you just got to roll it back and you can use the pressure of your finger as you're going across to just pull bits off just like this And start from one end. I don't like this method anymore myself personally, but it has helped a lot of people out on certain areas. It works well on flat areas. This this technique I've found anyway, which I'll show you afterwards. I'm going to put like a logo on the side of a shoe. So roll back, roll back. Ah, oh no. See, look at that. Don't worry. Things aren't destroyed. It's all about placing them back on with this tool. That's why I super recommend you picking up yourself a um a weeding tool. Oh, let's just whack you on there for now at a minute. Until I can reposition all of this because it's uh, gone a bit wonky. All right, I've completely balls this size up, side up, by the way, because I should have come from the center. But it's okay; you can get the drift of it. I may actually just do it again in a minute, but you get the idea. How you can roll roll back with it in sections. It works really well on flat areas, as I said. But at this frame, I've gone and balls it all up. Let's just reposition these. Da -da -da -da. All done. Ah. See, this is perfect, the perfect examples for how you work with this stuff. Here we go. That's it. Anyway, I'm not going to be spraying this, so anyway, wasting time. 
So let me get this bit up quick. So you can get the drift of how this works, how quickly you can lay these stencils down. And then anything that's misplaced and are out of place, you can just use these tools. And when you, if you've got like the spare the bits that are off cuts around the edges, you can just literally just pick them off and place them into spaces where you've misplaced a bit or, you know, it's missing a piece or you've damaged a bit, just like that. So that's that. And once you're done, see what I like to do is one memento I will get my knife is Swan Morton Stainless Steel Blade Company UK brilliant made in Sheffield this isn't a brand new sharp blade which I should have put one on before the video but I like to come let's get a view in I like to come in afterwards once the stencils have been roughly pushed in. And when they've got a brand new blade, this inside edge of the lever just there, let's see it zooming in. This edge, not everyone does this, Other people, like some people do, I, I sort of do, it's, it keeps things cleaner for me. Uh, just on there, I will run the knife across. See, this isn't sharp, damn it. I would. Let me see if I can pull that. Yeah, there you go. just get a cut in like that. I may change the blade just to show you. One second. Okay. So right, these are the blades. They they're so cheap. You get like ten in here, and uh, never throw these away either because you can resharpen these, and I occasionally do on a piece of leather because you'll be wasting it otherwise, and they do go blunt very quickly. So, like I said, it's in or against the edge. Come in with a sharp knife. You just want to come in, just gently run across. You will see how easy this cuts with a sharp knife. And you can pull off here like this, keeping the detail in. And then what I like to do is just tuck that down. You don't need to go completely underneath because sometimes, the most most of the time, this lever is actually glued from the inside slightly, but if you can see, you have got a little bit of a gap under there. So you can just run that round edge on the weeding tool along it, and just push it under. And then, once I've got this edge like this, and I wanna spray this, but I wanna keep this clean and that clean edge, I will come in with these tapes, so we've got the, um, what are these? What is these really? I think these are four mil or five mil. So this is a five mil masking tape. And these are the 3M different, uh, I can't actually remember what these were, what the difference is between these, but. Um, it's just fine lining tape for automotive graphics. So, and, and this stuff is just brilliant. You heat this up. You're gonna get a, you get a bonded. I'll show you because it's uh, it doesn't stick straight away. And uh, so what I'll do, oh, you can run this literally round the whole length of this, and it will bend and conform to every bit and stick. The only thing is you got to be careful when you're pulling it back off that you don't leave this on for too long. Like if you do it, leave it on there. Two days later, you take it off. That's no good. You need to do come in and do your project project straight away. Otherwise, you'll get a bit of pulling off the uh, lever, the skin bits there. So you come in, how right there, let's just get it level with the this piece of lever. And let me get my heat gun. So you just want to get it started because as soon as you apply heat, the glue on the back of it, oh, let me just plug this in. Ah, come on, you know. Okay. Just get this up to ten. Oh, 
Okay. You come in, and you get that first bit heated and stuck. Just like that, and then you literally walk this around the edge. And you don't want to go too far because it, it will peel itself back up. But you get it there, heat, you'll see it, it'll take the shape of the edge. And come in with this, and you push that in, and that is literally perfectly on the edge there and then you've got your tape there and you can run either this this masking tape around that bit this is what i normally do and then you can come in with your bigger pieces and blah 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 you get the drift but yeah this stuff I'd recommend it actually both of these <coughs> the masking tape one and actually I'd, I'm sorry I keep saying this all the time I just can't get around to putting everything on the site I do have hundreds of these in rolls which I need to get around to putting up which I will do soon I promise promise all right so next bit so I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to strip this off and I want to show you another technique. Okay, right. This is the next piece. Like this is one of the Paisley designs that we've done. Now the dots and the pieces on it are t tiny. They're tiny. You can see how small it is. So when you're trying to weed this off to get it like this is going to take you forever doing it like that. Like, you know, if I'm coming in it and I'm trying to weed it off, look, you're gonna you're fighting with all the bits because it's so look, it's just wound up. Let's try and zoom in, sorry. Can you see it? Yeah, so you're you're fighting trying to keep all the bits that you want to keep stuck down constantly. And they're just going to come out, and then you've got like dots that run up a whole line like that. But you've got to try to take it all off, leaving the dots behind. You're going to lose bits. You're going to get frustrated when a bit can't st won't stick back down. It's going to annoy you. It's going to piss you off, and you're going to give up. So. Sometimes it's best not to do it like that. It's just better to literally, let's just pull that off for a minute. It's just better to literally get. Some tape. Oh shit. I've got to stop swearing, man. Oh look, oh look, I've messed that up already. Maybe I should take, take two. Fool. What a fool. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, well, mine on this taps. Literally, what we're going to do, instead of weeding, weeding the negative or the positive, or the positive or the negative, blah, blah whatever, we are going to literally move the whole thing just like this. Okay, and get a good um, push on that, like that, and we've got everything on there, so we literally take it over as one full piece, because it's going to work out better once it's stuck for us to weed it on the actual shoe. Now, for some of you, this may be... A little bit difficult, but it's the same process. Can I bring this camera on? It's light a bit. Um, yeah, it's just like 
come in, start a small edge. I usually start from the front and well, one side and work to the other side, but it's uh it's difficult to sort of tell you how to do this because it's you're gonna have to find your own way. You want to push down quite firm, but keep your line flat. Basically, make a crease, but you want to roll the crease back and push down firmly as you're rolling like this and you can see how quick we can get this on without fully deforming air oh shit a little bit there deforming everything too much come on I've got a little bit of pull on these edges, but we won't be too far off of being able to manipulate it all back together. So, there we are. There, there. Is this something going on with the camera again? Okay. Okay, right. This piece on the outside edge, that is creating a pull. So, we can cut that. And... Come back in and lay. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on the camera. I'm using an iPhone Pro, uh, iPhone, what is it? iPhone 12 Pro Max. And it overheats. Haha, <laughs> you believe that? It overheats when I do long films on 4K. So let's carry on with this. We'll get our stencil down. Got a little bit of movement, it's not too much. It's all on the outside edges more than anything else. So we're in, we're basically in. So now we can literally come in once this is basically stuck and you're gonna find that it's easier just to peel off from these surfaces like this because now everything's going to be stuck to the shoe so when you come in actually work along a bit push down and pull up where are you there's the end of that piece i can't see yeah <clears throat> and as you can see it's still hard to do but it's all not easy, I tell you that. And we work along, 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 like so. It's off. Are you still with me? Yes, you are. Are you still alive? Are you bored to death yet? As you can tell, I've got another another cold. It's uh, what happens when uh, you've got kids and they're at school. Thank God this is not Corona. I haven't actually had that yet. But kids in schools just bring home all sorts of things. Uh, here we go, here we go. And these last little bits in here. I hope this is a bit more informative for you people out there that's uh, trying to lay stencils down. Remember, everything doesn't have to be completely perfect. You can have edges that are moved around. It doesn't have to be this exactly the same. But it's all about making it sort of as quick as possible. As quick as possible for you to sort of get through because you don't want to be here doing this for hours and hours on one shoe and you like depending on the price that you're going to charge you if the time and effort that's gone into it already it's not you're not making it back on the um on the time spent really but that all comes down to the people and actually how you charge and say well look you're charging this much because it's that much work but then your work's got to be 
flawless, isn't it? To charge big money. That's why the guys that are making the shoes now can charge good money. Plus you're getting quality materials as well. But <clears throat> yes, anyway, enough of that politics crap. Right, cool. So basically this is where we are. I'm not gonna carry on doing that. So there you go, you can see rough paisley in there and that's one way to do it. It is quite nice. You could hand place this. I've hand placed things in the past that are impossible. You want to get them to come and curve all the way around this corner. Like the toe box, you you need to hand place. And if you do it, you get great results because it just looks like a piece of fabric or a bit of leather that's curved around the front of the shoe. So that's how that's that works. All right, cool. So that is that part of this video on putting these in. Now I'm going to show you how to put some actual big logos on and stuff. All right, cool. Be back in a minute. All right, okay. Um, ignore the color stencil here. I have been sending this stuff to people, but not many of you have uh, been getting on well, well with it. I'll get on perfectly well with it, to be honest with you. But I won't be sending it out no more, so that's it. Anyway, forget that. Now, trying to put stuff like this. Can you see that? It's a Toon Squad one. We been was working with someone on a pair of Jordans with these. And the only way that I find that I can get these designs on something like that, if you're trying to go over this, is literally to get it on like this. Leave the backing paper on. And just get it roughly stretched over another sharp knife brand new blade and you literally want to come in and just run along the edges here like this this seems crazy right but i've done it like this and it's come out perfect once you get that on there you can run it along and literally do exactly this all the way over the design. Try not to cut your shoe, just run it gently. You can push that down, and then we've got this bit here. Try not to distort it all. You don't have to do this on everything, because if you've got flat surfaces, you don't need to do it. But if you're trying to do it on areas like this, this just this works. I'm literally going in and then running the knife against the swoosh, just so it pulls, it doesn't go below, I cut the lever underneath. Just like that. And then follow it along around the swoosh. In. Oops. Come on. There's a good boy. I've hit a snag. It was all going so well. Don't worry, we can sort that a bit out in a minute. That, that's stuck. And then we want to come down this edge here. To there. All right, cool. Now, I've um, moved a bit there. Don't you just hate it when things don't go as they should? That bit I'll save on the side and I'll place that back in after. Um, right, push these all down. Now we can get these all flat.
just like that. And then we can come in and like before with the rest of like the beginning of the video, finger down, press and pull away. Move every bit. You can even use this to come in behind it and literally pull. Don't push with this, just pull this bit and let it release itself. You don't want to pull with this because you want to put pressure, but you want this to pull this. Just like that, and that bit hasn't been cut there. Like that. Let's make it around this corner. We'll have to come back in because it's a larger area with the fingers. Up the swoosh. Now you can push. <coughs> and uh, the same with the other bits. I'll put you on a time lapse here because I'll do the whole lot just so I can pick it off afterwards and show you. Okay, so once it's all down and all the bits are off, you can come back in. This is why I give, when I, when you buy a stencil like this, I give you, you may need only two, or you think you may need only two, and I'll send you like ten. You know, way more, you could probably do fucking five, six pairs of shoes of it, but it's not the point of that. It's about actually, you need all of the pieces when you're doing things like this. That's why I send so many, everyone's like, oh, I've got loads, but... Until you start using it, you think, right, now I know why he sent you so many bits. Unless you're a super expert and you, you don't waste a thing, which is, is brilliant for you. All right, cool. So then, come in. All right, don't worry about it, stick there. Yeah. Right. So, and this is all of this with no heat on now. So now they're basically adhered to all the flat surfaces without having all that undulation going on. So the bits that are missing, you can come back in afterwards and, and sort of and put the bits on and off. Because then what you want to do is, because you're going to alternate your colours and take stencils on and off, you basically just peel what you want on and off. Have a little piece of non-stick here on the side and then you can just put back down. Like personally, I wouldn't do it like this because this is a little bit too detailed to go over this much of the shoe. If it was like a, what a word going across, like say Netflix or a logo of something, um, wording, you'll be all right. You can do it like that. But this is a bit too much sort of to to do on the Jordans, you're sort of half okay, but some people mostly do take the tick off to do that, or the swoosh. So then you can get your, you can see how it goes now anyway. So the tune squad's under there. Take your bits off, spray them, keep it all on the side, in some sort of good pattern order as well, so you know where each piece goes. So when you wanna come back afterwards, so you've sprayed that color in, for the tune squad, you're gonna come back in, Line your logo, uh, your stencil back up, and just maneuver it all around the place until it's all back into position, and then go through. So yeah, that's basically that's the right way of doing it. All right, cool. All right, so I hope that was uh, a bit informative for you. What I'm gonna do is there's two videos coming out. This one and there's another one. I'm just gonna time lapse me laying the stencil over the whole shoe just so you can have a have a look and see how it's all laid down before spraying and taped up just to the point of the first spray um yeah just like and subscribe as always i hope you uh learned something out of that and uh
Yeah, keep on customizing. Thanks for watching, peeps. See you later.